All right, guys, welcome back. This is part three. We're gonna dive into some film now. Film is such an important part of my game, both to improve my, my individual skills, but it's also really important when scouting against defenders, scouting against certain teams, um, and I use it before just about every game. So in this first clip, going against uh, the Water Dogs, this was in the, uh, the, the tournament in 2020, and I, I threw this behind the back pass to Tom, and a uh, few reasons kind of for why this, ha why this pass happened you watch and you go slow, um, you know, when I throw it, I'm looking in the opposite direction of where I'm throwing it to try to deceive the defense. Um, Chris actually doesn't bite on this at all. Uh, Chris Sabia, the Water Dogs defender, who I played in college with. That's another part of the reason why I threw it behind the back there is because Chris knew that a pass was coming, um, but I had to use some form of deception so that way it, it wasn't going to get picked off. So this next one, this one is back in my Penn State days, playing with Mac. Um, you know, it, it it was a kind of a flick of a behind the back um, when when I kind of roll through it. The reason that it works and the reason that 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 specific pass was was open was because Mac's guy was was the slide guy. He slid to me, um, and, and when that happened. They didn't really have a two slot. I saw that he was open and I tried to carry his defender away from him as far as possible. So you'll notice that when I'm throwing passes and specifically behind the back passes, I really try to pull my pull both defenders away as far as I can to really create that gap and make it really hard for them to recover on that backside. You know, Max able to step into it. He got a nice little seal from number 14, Dylan Folds, right there, um, to be able to step into that. So here's a here's another one to, to number number three. Um, this one was in the Ohio State game. Um, just a skip pass through the through the entire defense. I, I will preface this and say that that Mac and I actually warmed up a lot of our practices, throwing really hard skip passes across the field to one another, and I think that is really where you start that chemistry, is you need to do this in practice before you just go do it in a game. Similar to behind the backs, and similar to any fancy passes that you throw um, with your teammates to really be able to build that chemistry. And so if we look, you know, it gets through the heart of the defense. The other thing that I will add is this was at the end of the shot clock, probably a home run pass. Um, it ended up going through, Ohio State was not ready for it. Um, and, and it ended up slicing through the heart of the defense. Another thing I'll mention, I mentioned it in the first, first part um, about knowing your teammates. You know, Max release is just unbelievable. He was able to get this out so quickly, and his defender was actually in a pretty good position to defend. Mac was just in a better position to shoot. So this was this year, game one against the Atlas. Little big little pick um, with myself and Ryan Ambler. Um, and then just a nice, easy backdoor cut from Marcus Holman. And we talked about it in the beginning, but my stick, right? Having my stick not have a lot of whip to be able to have a quick release on this. If we roll this and we go slow, I am cradling one-handed, put two hands on the stick and just snap my wrist to that back pipe. If I were to have to take a cradle, if I had more whip in my stick, if I had to have a little bit of a longer release, more, more often than not, that pass doesn't get there. Because that release is so quick and it's just a nice flick of the wrist, it's able to get to, to Marcus on that backside. This one, uh, this, one's, this one was a fun one. This one was, I, I will be 100% transparent, it takes a little bit of luck to be a great passer sometimes and it takes some great teammates on the other end of the ball to be a great, great passer. I should probably say teammates first. Ryan Ambler does a phenomenal job making a play on this ball. Um, so originally, you know, part of the reason why I threw this, similar to the Ohio State clip with Mac, when, I, when I'm looking and I'm scanning, I realize that there's four seconds left on the shot clock. We're in overtime. So I tried to throw a ball going across the field so it didn't get picked off and they don't go up, up the other way. Um, and if you watch, actually, I throw this kind of to the back pipe hoping Ryan was, was gonna be open. I was trying to throw him open. It's called a spot feed, throw him to where he's going to be. He ends up kind of catching it in an insane way and, and making the defender spin and puts it home. Um, I actually, truth be told, I didn't see this goal. 
I was running off of the field to get our, uh, our midfielders on. Um, and I turn to the bench and I see Ian McKay going crazy. Um, and then I turn back and, and we ended up winning this one. So again, sometimes you gotta be a little lucky, um, but you, you gotta trust your teammates and sometimes your teammates just make some crazy plays on the ball. In, in this clip against the Cannons, um, we're dealing with a, a, an end of shot clock scenario. Um, 10 seconds left. In these scenarios, it's, you, you can be a little bit more uh, risk friendly and, and kind of take those risks. And so as I'm traveling up the field, you know, I try to beat my man and, and get to the goal, but I realize that it's probably not, I'm not in a good position to score right here. So I get my head up. And then the moment that I get my head up, I see Will Manny not only climb up the field, but then as his defender kind of drifts, Connor Fields sets a little seal on him, and I see him kind of just cutting to that back pipe. Um, Ryan Ambler actually almost picked it off, and if you look at the goalie, the goalie didn't really know where the ball was. I talked about that a little bit when we were out on the field, but being able to throw these skip passes through the heart of the defense, not only is tough for the defense, but it's extremely tough for a goalie. Because if a goalie has to change the, the field and the way that he's playing, if you have a guy who's got a quick release on the other end of the ball, more often than not, the goalie just doesn't have a high percentage chance of saving the ball. There's a better chance that it just hits him um, than him actually making a save. So as I look through all of these film clips, you know, there's there's a lot of good things that happen. There's a lot of great, great teammates on the end of these balls. Um, and, and I think it comes down to a few different things. Obviously, you need to have trust in your teammates if you're gonna be able to throw passes that maybe have a little bit of extra speed on them, maybe have a little bit more deception on them. Your teammates need to be ready for those. And that starts on the practice field, that starts off of the practice field, getting to know them as a person, um, you know, having good relationships with your teammates. So that way, when the game is on the line, when it's a high pressure scenario, the trust is in place and you guys can just press play. So I would say that. And then the other thing is the IQ side. You know, I mentioned it going against Chris Sabia. I know his tendencies. I need to read and react to his tendencies um, when I play against him. Um, but, but I also need to know how much time's left in the shot clock. I need to know what the situation is in the game. I need to know if we're up by a goal, if we're down a goal, if we need a goal. Um, you know, different things like that uh, all come into my mind when I'm playing. Um, and, and it really starts with film. It starts with understanding and preparing for the game. So, that's what, so that way, once you step into the, the field of play and the whistle blows, all you need to do is just read and react and let your preparation take over.